This video is sponsored by Surfshark VPN. Here we are again, it's time to bust some more myths and sell that Tears of the Kingdom. Because each time I release a video, I get more and more suggestions. Although I will say, I'm not sure how many more videos I will do on this game. Because man oh man, I've done a lot of videos like this, and I'm getting a bit burned out on this game. So leave me some suggestions below on which games I should cover next. I bet there are plenty of games out there that have myths that could be tested. However, I do have one last idea. I might combine all the Tears of the Kingdom myth busting videos into one, and then I add another 20 new myths to it. This way I could release one mega special to end it all that would cover a total of 200 myths. So let me know in the comments what you think about that idea. But now that I mentioned that, I think it's about time we dive into these myths, because I got some good ones. But first, the sponsor of today's video, Surfshark VPN. The ultimate way to surf the web in peace and without any limits. Surfshark VPN keeps your online identity safe by encrypting all of the information sent between your device and the internet. This keeps your personal data protected from big companies or cyber criminals. And trust me, this is important. Personally, I was almost hacked once, which is something that has been happening a lot lately in the Nintendo Tuber space. But with something like Surfshark VPN, you're a lot less likely to get hacked, which could be devastating. And Surfshark even offers real-time protection which is the golden standard of cybersecurity. And since Surfshark keeps your true IP address a secret, it's a lot harder for hackers to get you as well. But this isn't the only reason to use it. As someone who lives in Europe, there are a lot of shows that I can only watch if I'm in the US. But with Surfshark VPN, I can bypass this by just changing my location. So click the link in the description below and use code Dr. Wiley to get three extra months for free. And Surfshark offers a 30-day money-back guarantee, so there's no risk to try it out. So give it a shot. But now, let's dive into these myths. Number 15. When you go to Lookout Landing, you will at some point see that there are a bunch of Ritos flying around the place, circling the camp forever, never stopping. It's a bit weird to be honest, and I have no idea why they are doing this. But someone in my comments said that you can mess with them in an interesting way. Because the Dark Ender said, if you shoot the flying Rito at Lookout Landing, the arrow will ricochet off of them. Now when I read this, I was curious. How would they react? And do the arrows really bounce off like that? In a lot of cases like this, arrows will just pass through them, doing very little. So what will happen? Well, when I went to look at landing and decided to shoot the Rito with my bow a couple of times, I could immediately see the arrows flipping and spinning because they did ricochet. So it was clear to me that this claim is true. And they even get a bit angry and confused when you do this. Clearly they don't like it, even though they aren't really hurt by these pointy arrows, weirdly enough. Number 14. In the past, we have experimented a lot with enemies. They can do some interesting stuff, which we already saw in Breath of the Wild. I mean, I can still remember in 2016, when I went to the Nintendo Switch pre-launch event, that Bokoblins can use almost anything around them to kill you. Heck, one picked up an explosive barrel and threw it at my mate Zeltek, which shocked all of us. And now in Tears of the Kingdom, we are once again testing what these buggers can do, now that things like Zonai devices and fused weapons are a thing. And Willy suggested something for me to try. He said what happens if Link gets hit by a weapon fused with a muddle bud. Because in game, this confuses enemies and so they attack each other. But what will happen to our hero Link? Well I fused this beautiful flower to a stick, which actually looked quite nice, and then I gave it to this Bokoblin. And once he hit me, the muddle bud went off. And the Bokoblin was instantly hit by the effects of the muddle bud. Meanwhile Link was fine. He wasn't affected by the item at all, which is actually something we've seen before when testing other items. So this claim is false. Our strong and mighty hero doesn't really care, which is a bit disappointing. Combat could have been so much more interesting if plants like this could be used by enemies and would have a weird effect, like inverting your controls. But nope, sadly enough, Nintendo didn't add this. Number 13. 
In the past, I've covered some simple myths when the game was only a month old, and so many didn't know about them, with the most important one being about the bomb shield, one of the best fused items in the entire game. But this wasn't the only option out there. You could also use a spring for this. But then someone in my comment section came up with an interesting idea. What happens when you use a bomb shield on a spring? Would it make you go higher at all? Well, who knows? Maybe it combines the two in a way, and so you go incredibly high into the sky. And so I decided to test it. First I set up my spring, and then I attached a bomb to my shield so I could jump on it. And when I did so, I noticed that this doesn't work at all. The spring doesn't activate, and one time it was even destroyed by the explosion. So really, this is just a waste of resources, and you're better off using just one spring that you put on the ground. As you can see, standing on that and activating it goes much higher than a bomb shield. Number 12. Now sure, bombs and springs are fun, but there are other options out there for going high into the sky. Heck, I even found new ones that I had never heard of, even though the game has been out for months now. And so I am willing to test almost anything. So here we are again, testing another shield fuse combo that could send us high into the sky or save us from fall damage. Because user Linwood Harrell said, could the water bubbles from the water temple save you from fall damage since it does give you a bit of a bounce when you shield surf on them. And so I ventured to the water temple to give it a shot. I got myself a bubble and tested it. But first, I jumped off a small height. It worked well. The bubble does give you a bit of a bounce. And so I decided to jump all the way down with it. But then... I realized that this doesn't work at all. I instantly died due to fall damage. So yeah, we still haven't found the ultimate strategy. Well, unless you use the upgraded glide armor set. Number 11. Now I gotta be honest, the next claim pissed me off so much because it was borderline hell to test. It required me to try again and again, and each time I couldn't pull it off. Man oh man, this was one of the most frustrating myths I have tested in a long while. And it's all about dropping down from the sky and arrows. Because user the fluff said, try catching an arrow while falling from the sky like you can do with star fragments and dragon parts. And so I decided to do this. Now, now I did this many times, so much actually that I was about to throw my controller because man this was hard. And while I did come close to the arrow multiple times, it never gave me the option to grab it. But I had to get that arrow so I kept trying and trying, but each time I failed and couldn't grab it. So yeah, I gave up at some point, and as far as I can see you can't catch them. The game just doesn't give you the option, and doing it is also stupid hard and very frustrating. Number 10. The amount of things you can do with bombs is insane. You can fuse them to weapons or arrows to deal explosive damage to your foes, you will fly into the air if you combine it with a shield, and so much more. But when I was browsing the comments of the most recent video, or at least one of the most recent ones, I came across an interesting claim. Because the user Everyman said that cooking bombs actually makes Link explode, and I had never heard of this. I mean, a normal person would never throw an explosive in a hot pan. But hey, we have to try this in the name of science. And I mean, if it goes wrong, it's luckily enough in a video game. And so I went to the cooking pot that is found at Lookout Landing and I threw a bomb inside of it. Now I was prepared for hell, but to my surprise, nothing special happened. Sure, it turned into dubious food and it did create a bunch of smoke, but this always happens. And even when I threw in a couple of other ingredients, I still didn't get the explosive experience I was promised. So sadly, enough this claim is false even though it would have been funny if we saw a small explosion number nine each time I make one of these videos, there are a couple of things that stick out to me. You guys and girls love a couple of types of myths a bit too much. Mostly stuff involving boomerangs and the gloom hand enemies. You guys love to talk about them. And so as expected, we are going to visit my little handsy friends on the Great Plateau again because someone suggested something interesting. Now as you can see, this comment is pretty darn long, so I will simplify it a bit. Now what Mason says here is that enemies made out of gloom drop dark clumps, and these can be used to increase gloom resistance. But 
What happens if you shoot them at gloom enemies? Will it deal extra damage or something like that? Well, I had never tried this, so I gave it a shot. But I quickly found out that my gloom hand friends don't really care. Within no time, they tore me to bits, and no matter how many dark clump arrows I shot at them, they didn't stop. So yeah, it doesn't do anything special. In the end, you're better off using it for food and elixirs instead of shooting them. Number 8. One thing I loved when the Nintendo Switch Zelda games came out was the realism. You know, all the little details that were added? Think of improvising enemies, the weather mechanics, the realistic way fire spreads, and also the fact that you can feed dogs found at stables. But now, someone in my comment section has come up with something fun. What happens if you give the dogs a bone? For example, the arm of a stealth enemy, which you can collect after you defeat them? Well, in order to find out, I got myself a stealth bacoblin arm, and went to a stable to give it to one of the dogs. But when I was there and tried to offer the bone to the dog, it just became scared like so many other NPCs in the world. It's clear that the dog knows that he must not mess with this thing because it's filled with dark magic or could lead to trouble. And so no matter what I did, he just ran away. So it's clear that this claim is false. Number 7. Sonai devices are weird. These things can have some crazy powers that have never been seen in the Zelda series before. And in my opinion, the most mysterious one is the Stabilizer, which always stands upright no matter what you do. And this can be handy for a number of things, which you can see in some of the shrines. But this user, whose name I can't pronounce, said that if you attach the top of a Stabilizer to another, it will fall slower than usual when activated. Now, I had never tried tried this before, and I bet the effect it has will be interesting, because we are borderline breaking the game. So I tried it, and as expected, the effect was weird, very weird. If you connect two of these, they will stay perfectly horizontal, and so they can lift anything with ease. No matter what you do, they won't fall, which would be immensely handy when building loads of things. And when you add the stabilizer when one of them is already active, you will see this weird falling action. So this claim is actually actually true, which is really cool. Number 6. As I have mentioned about uh, 5,000 times, I get loads of Boomerang Myth submissions. So many of you want me to keep messing around with this specific weapon type, but I will say this next claim involving the Boomerang was especially good. Prince Nocturne said, If you attach a Feathered Edge or Eightfold to a Boomerang, will it have a different effect? And so I went out there to test it. Now I will say the Feathered Edge wasn't really worth testing, but I had high hopes for the Yiga Blade. But when I created this weapon, I noticed something strange. While you would expect some sort of wind slash from it, this doesn't happen at all. The boomerang looks really cool, sure, but it doesn't have a special effect at all, which is super disappointing. Can you imagine how cool it would be if wind slashes started flying all over the place, hitting enemies left, right and center? This would have been super cool, but sadly enough, that's just not the case, which means that this claim is false. Number 5 now, of course, this wasn't the only boomerang myth, you silly. I got like a billion more to cover. And this next one was also very unique. So I decided to add it, even though we already hit our boomerang myth quota. Because Charlotte commented, if you attach a pine cone to a boomerang and then shoot a fire arrow at it, it will create a fire tornado. Now, when I read this, I thought it sounded really cool, so I gave it a shot. But there was an issue. Hitting the boomerang with a fire arrow is basically un doable. And even when it seemed like I hit the boomerang, nothing happened. So I tried to do it again, but this time I used a campfire to light the pinecone. But when I did this, it didn't have the desired effect. Sure, the campfire roared and the boomerang was on fire, but I didn't see a tornado or anything like that. So as far as I can see, this just doesn't work. I used both fire arrows and the campfire, and both didn't yield any desirable result. So this this claim is false. Number 4. 
This next one captured my attention instantly. It's a claim that makes sense and could work really well. In the game, one of the most fearsome foes out there is the Gliok, an elemental dragon that is incredibly powerful, mostly due to their enormous size and elemental beams that they can shoot from their mouths. But is there a way to counter that attack? Well, someone in the comments section came up with an interesting plan. You Forgot the Pickles asked me if a mirror shield will reflect the elemental beam of a Gliok right back at them. Which which was a thing in older Zelda games like Ocarina of Time. And so I tested it. I went to the Colosseum and confronted the Gliok there. And as soon as he shot his beam, I blocked it. But the beam didn't fly back at the Gliok. It stopped it, but not for long. And so I took some damage and had to flee afterwards. And I gotta say, I'm a bit disappointed in Nintendo for not including this. It would have been so much fun. But nope, this claim is false. Number three. Now another thing we have experimented a lot with as well is fusing things to a shield to improve shield surfing or its combat capabilities. And we are going to look at another one of these, because if it works, it could change everything. Lizzie French said, Is there an item fused to a shield that would allow for surfing on water? For example, frozen meat, sapphire or ice blocks. Now this idea is genius in my opinion. Imagine if this really works, it could be beyond useful. And so I went on my way to find a body of water so I could test this. And I started with the sapphire shield, which didn't work at all. And so I grabbed white choo choo jelly, which also didn't work. At this point, I was losing hope, but I knew I still had to try the ice sheet as well. So I created one, put it on my shield, and tried it with this one a couple of times. But again, it failed. It just doesn't work no matter what you do, which was disappointing to say the least. Number two. All right, all right, I have to admit, this list isn't full of completely new myths. Sometimes I retest stuff if the comment section asks me to. And in a previous video, I tested a myth involving Ryu, because apparently if you confront her with one of the plushies found in a room, she will say its name. Now, when I tested this at first, she didn't seem to care and didn't react to me no matter how many of the plushies I tried. But apparently you need to fuse it to your shield and then if you show it to her, she will finally react. And so I did this, and to my surprise, it did actually work. So the people in the comment section were right, and I just messed up. It's cool to see that this claim is actually true instead of false. And this is also why I read the comments, because all of you lovelies come up with good new ideas and points of what could have gone wrong. Number one. Now for our numero uno, the final myth, it's all about one simple thing, Zonai batteries. Because someone in the comments section made a bold claim that once again made sense, but who knows if it's true. Turbo Tangerine said that if you attach a large Zonai piece to a Zonai build, it will make the battery last longer. Now, since Zonai batteries are made of this material, it could actually work. But as we all know, we gotta test it. And so I took the trust the beam cycle and added a normal size battery together with a piece of large zonai to it. Now I rode off on the thing and saw the external battery slowly drain, and kept an eye on how long it would power the bike. As soon as it ran out, I put another one on the bike, but this time I didn't include any zonite. Now when I did this, I saw that it ran out of juice just as quickly, which proved that the piece of zonite didn't do anything. So yeah, it was clear to me that this claim was false. Now those were all the myths, but don't worry, I made many more videos like this, which you can check out right now. And be sure to leave your suggestions below, or myths for different games. And be sure to check out our sponsor, Surfshark VPN, by clicking the link in the description below. Thank you all so much for watching, I hope you enjoyed this video. Like I said, this is gonna be the last Tears of the Kingdom myth busting video, aside from the big compilation that I might wanna do, like, which includes all the older uh, myth busting videos and this one, and then 20 new myths, making it a round 200. Um, let me know in the comments if you want me to do that, uh, cause that would be like the final for Tears of the Kingdom, cause really, I've played this so much, I've done so many like videos like this, I'm just, uh, kind of done. Uh, but I still hope you enjoyed the video, be sure to subscribe, click the bell button, leave a like, the whole good stuff, and, um, I hope to see you on the next video, okay? Yes, please, please watch my video, I'm gonna cry otherwise, bye, bye, bloop!